we are back, court in session. I'm here with the Avenger only one. That's Keelan Phillip and the Major Scout, Alan Pinder. I want to wish you all, both you gentlemen, Happy New Year. So our first show for the year. Thank you. So I hope that, you know, we go from strength to strength. We got some new things coming in February. So I want people to stay tuned for that. But right now, we'll go to, you know, the Avenger, Kilan Phillip. He's the only one uh, Avenger, so he'll talk about the rest. Yes, sir. The only one and the greatest one to ever live. Um, first, we go with our tiers in the rest. First tier, Wemby Land. Rocket Science first. Come on, we already established this for weeks, weeks on weeks on on. on end. Rockets and Spurs, they are full on tanking. Wemby land is a fully set. Next tier, promising. Thunder. This team, you would think, is going after um, that they should be in, in the Wemby land tier. But they have a budding su superstar in Shea Gildas Alexander. He is having quite a season, averaging 35 and 5, I think, around there. I think shooting 50% from the field still. Um, obviously, the rest of the team is young, but I think um, SGA, Chet, when he finally plays, and it doesn't have to be when um, Victor with Miami, but another high, high, high draft pick. And I think maybe they could start making some moves. You know, they have a million draft picks as well. Maybe you could make a trade and, you know, they might start being on the up and up instead of just being that young team with 10 million picks. Next year, bad. That's all it name. Bad. We should already know what this is. Lakers, come on. We should already know what this is. This team, other teams have been dealing with injuries as well, and they've just not been this bad. Lakers are racing um, a great year from Braun still. Westbrook had decided to come off the bench and might win six man of the year. AD was playing like an MVP until he got her, and they're still horrible. Doesn't matter. Next, good while it lasted. Jazz and Blazers. These two teams were the <laughs> top of the rest. Everything was looking so, so peachy. And now it looks like they're back down to earth. Uh, the Jazz, if they are one of those teams that end up being middle, like not in the playoffs, but not bad enough to be um, in the Wemby line, uh, Sweet States, it'd be a, a weird season because everybody thought that they would tank. And then they started playing better than usual. So their record is not good enough to be bad, but not good enough to also be good. It's weird. But, you know, that's life. Sucks. Next. Worst trade ever. Possibly. <laughs> Timberwolves. Come on. I give up so much to just be made. Like, okay. there's, no, there's no way that you can be happy that you give up this much to be potentially worse than you were last year. Like, yes, I know Kat got her, but even with Kat, you could argue that they were not even that good anyway. I think they, they've won four games in a row and they're still not over 500. It's, 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 no, this might be the worst trade ever. They give up. If you count the, the, the caliber of players that they gave up, is they give away eight first rounders. Come on. For Woody Gobert, he's nice, but no. Next, injury issues. These three teams the Clippers, Suns, and the Warriors. These are all teams that are good. One is a former champion, one was in the finals a couple of years um, as far back as 2020, and the Clippers have one of the deepest rosters in the league. However, injuries. Kawhi has been in an oil line at first, but it seems like he's playing now whenever he can. I think he only missed one or two games because of an illness or something like that, but it seems like he's playing whenever he can now. Unfortunately, no, Paul George is hurt. So even when one is actually playing now, the other one isn't. Um, Steph Curry only, only recently came back for the Warriors and they somehow had this fight game uh, in the street, but then they realized that they were at home and they're still very good at, at home and horrible on the road, and that is still continuing. And the Suns are missing Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and Aiden did not play last night against the Warriors, and they still beat the Warriors, which when Steph came back, I didn't expect. But you know, these are all teams that are a lot better than their records in the kid because of um injuries. Best team in Cali, we three kings. Oh, yes, the <laughs> Sacramento Kings. They are, um, I think they're last time we checked the standards, they were, yeah, they're the best team in Cali, so they have a better record than the Clippers, the Warriors, and of course, the Lakers. I mean, though, but um, 
Yeah, so playoff bound Kings. Seems like that. Yeah, yeah, it seems like that streak is finally coming to the end. And everyone here is happy, especially El, because he was always on the Kings train. I am a Kings reason. man. I am a Kings man. Yeah, yeah, I got to get it. Play that beam. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Last two thirds. I call this one Luca plus four. This is the maps. <laughs> this is just add four guys, and Luca will take you to the promised land, which is unfortunately maybe a first or second round exit. This this toss because I don't understand. The Mavs had a they found a formula. Get another good shot creator with with Luca, and you get to the conference finals. Previous years, you didn't have that. You get to the first round, so you let go of Jalen Brunson. And you don't have that. So I expect the first one, Isaac, because I don't know how you had a formula. You said, are you going to go away from it? Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie is not good enough to be a number two on a contending team. So I do not think that they will I get was too far. It, there was the hope, but it's not the reality. It definitely is. Luca <laughs> is awesome. But, you know, this team, this team has a lot of limits. Um, and then last year, better than the rest. No, I'm not saying that this, these... Teams are bad. I just think that teams like um, the Celtics and I guess the Bucks, when healthy, you would consider maybe favorites over these teams. But I still believe these three teams in the West, the Pelicans, Nuggets, and Grizzlies, are the three best teams in the West right now. I don't believe in the NBA. There's no team that we be like, oh, God, we got to get through like the KD Warriors or like anything like that. I think it's very wide open. I think any one of these teams – can be any team from the the East, but I just think obviously you might favor the Celtics or the Bucks if they were to to match up. But these three teams are a, a tier above everyone else. They've also dealt with injuries. Pelicans have dealt with Brian Ingram, and old Zion is old, and they're still winning. Nuggets have dealt with Maria and PJ being in a no at times. Maria starting to catch himself, and Grizzlies have dealt with Job being old. Desmond Bain was out for a little bit. John Jackson is now coming back and blocking 10 million shots per, per game. But uh, I think these teams is, are just above everybody else right now until, I guess, we can see the Warriors, maybe the Clippers and the Suns, I guess, if they get back healthy, then we'll see how much better they are than everybody else. But those are my tears. Well, I must tell you that I am a little concerned. If I was the Warriors, I'd be a bit concerned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because this is what 40, 42 games, 43 games, and you under 500. Um, it's this, league, this league, you got another 30 something games to really pull, pull it together. Uh, yeah. You really don't want to be languishing down and playing down. All the talk about um, that you don't mind who you play, you mind who you play. Yeah, right? especially, if especially if you're on the road. Especially if you're on the road. Especially on the road. You the you worst record. That, yeah, the worst right? record in the league. And the thing is that they've actually played more home games than road games so far. So it could get worse. I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure if injuries are that big of a factor in, in this case. Right. I, so I, I, the, I think you had them at that in that tier. I'm not sure if that may apply to the Warriors. I'm giving them okay. I didn't want to obviously put this tier as in too much, but I'm giving them, I guess, the slight benefit of the doubt because of their championship experience for the court. That's the only reason I didn't have them a little bit lower because I think they're they're starting for you. Um, the vets, their net rating is very good in terms of that. That for man, like, is when they go to the bench and the youth, that is a little bit tricky. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have them any higher for, for sure, but I didn't really want to put them a little bit lower. But I didn't want to just have a separate tier just to name them what are we doing warriors or something so yeah just get them in that well, i just i just think that they are they are they should start to to, to um you know, get a bit worried yeah um, I, I, I think i totally get it. Need, i think they need to be targeting trade deadly agree yeah, yeah. and, totally. and there's something really strange that. about there's a there's something about warriors no auto porter you hear from auto porter we hear auto porter hurt hurt you're yeah, her, her in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, so you know that is the best, really. But you know, I I still a little worried. If I was a Warriors fan, I'd be a little worried. 
As the Lakers fan, I was worried from the beginning of the season. So, I mean, <laughs> they are worried now in, in nothing. Lakers are trending up a little bit, though. So yes, Yeah, they are trending, up. but, yes, you know, as they say... Horrible to just buy. There's, 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 there's 40-something games. There's a 30-something games or 20-something games. <laughs> no, come on. Anyway, so, now we look at the East. And in the East, well, we don't have many tiers. We just got <laughs> really good teams in the East. <laughs> Um, I've noticed that that the Heat has now made a little push. I know they are above 500. I know moving up the standings. Right above them is the Knicks. Uh, you know what the Knicks are the Knicks. So yeah, so they will be crazy shortly. Um, <laughs> the Bulls, the Bulls. I I don't know. I'm trying to put my hand. What is wrong with the Bulls? But I mean, they they are on. Uh, they were on a, like a. Well, four game, five game in the street, a loss lately. Um, uh, I but, want to just one thing about, 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 about the Bulls. The Bulls are one of the weirdest teams I have encountered this season. I've been following them, right? <laughs> they are, I think, either 10 and 2 or like 10 and 1 or 9. Some really crazy thing against the Celtics, the Bucks, the Nets, and the 76ers. Literally the best teams in the East. They are beating them easily. And then against every other team that is horrible, they are just losing. Like, I mean, so the Thunder. Yeah, and, and, and losing badly. 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 Like, <laughs> they are so confusing. Right. It's like... So they, they are confusing, but... Um, <laughs> then we have the... Well, we talk about Atlanta Hawks, and, you know, um, um, there, there was some report saying that the coach wanted to resign. Um... <laughs> But I, I retire, think, retire apparently. Oh, so retire! Oh, okay. that's retire, worse. Apparently. <laughs> retire. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I think that's... I'll do a temporary retirement though. But... <laughs> just want to get off the team. That's all. They probably yeah, just yeah. want to get out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we retire for a year or two, then we discover love for the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we just got love. We just got love for the game with good, better players. <laughs> <laughs> with a different team. Yeah, with a different team. Class, right. <laughs> but, I must admit that the surprise of the East is the Indiana Pacers. I did mm. not expect the Indiana Pacers to be this good. Alanita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but, I did not, I, but they are good. Because yeah. we, you know, we, we, me and Alan was speaking, you know, there are like the only eight teams in the NBA that got a better record. And, you know, they don't have, you know, all the big names of everybody. You know, the unfortunate thing that's happened to Indiana is that Indiana is, is groom people and then there's more leave. So we'll see how, how this team works out. So, um, then we have the seven sixers, <clears throat> the seven sixers, the Bucks, uh Brooklyn, who is no player really well, and <clears throat> sorry, and Brooklyn, they are now nine and one in last thing. Yes. So Brooklyn is there, and then Celtics, who's beating everybody, is still at top of the East. So that's the East. Um, besides Indiana, um, Allen, who you think is another surprise in the East? Well, I have the same, the same Brooklyn Nets. I think I mean, we had an earlier episode where I was saying I wasn't sure if Brooklyn was really going to be a good team. But I've kind of flip flop internally on Brooklyn. When they were making moves during the summer, I thought that they were actually assembling a pretty good team. That was until until KD came came out and requested the trade. I said he didn't think they were assembling a very good team. And all the chaos with KD and his trade requests, Kyrie and his tweets, Nash being fired. I really didn't think this team could recover because the team wasn't bad last year and to get swept by the Celtics. I just thought the team just totally disintegrated. And I figured that was going to happen again this year. But it seems that Javon coming in, his influence has been much greater than I anticipated. And I think he's really done a good job to settle the team and to get that team back, back on track and get them refocused again and have a level of cohesion where I, I think it was a there were it was a 10 or 12 game in the street they were on recently. So, yeah, yeah I, I – I'm still not convinced that they're going to be able to get it done in the playoffs. We have to wait and see because their offense, they're making, is built on a lot of difficult shots. They have mm-hmm. difficult shot makers right now. I don't know if those are going to be good shots in the playoffs, but 
it'll be interesting to see, but they're definitely much better than I initially anticipated. Right. So uh, the, the, I must admit the, the, I really must admit that I, I, I just let you, I, I didn't really feel they would be this good to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but um, we'll see. Um, Katie's no hurt. So we'll see how they respond with Katie being out. They are nine and one in the last time and they won the last two. And the only, there's no other team that's better than them at this point in the in the last 10 games um, in the East. Right? Actually in basketball, because I think the sure. Denver Nuggets, Denver Nuggets eight and two in the last 10. So there's the East. So now we have the East and the West. You know, we have to go to our Belgian scout, Alan Pender, and he will give us one of his, you know, they usually give me some good tips on a fancy pick. Over to you there, Mr. Bearder Scout. Well, your Lakers, since Eddie Van Dome have a gym in Toronto Spring, he's been doing very well, scoring about 20 points and 10 boards since mid-December. He's been playing extremely well for the Lakers. So he's still available in quite a few of the leagues on, on, on ESPN. So if he's still available in your league, which I, I'm surprised if he is, you definitely need to pick him up. Marco Fultz has also been playing pretty well since he came back from the injury. He was actually filling in pretty well for Jalen Suggs, who also went over injury. His production is very all around, similar to what Suggs would be giving you, some points, assists, and boards. But Fultz has been a little, well, not Fultz, Suggs has been a little bit disappointed. So he is no working his way back from injury. So you should keep an eye on that dynamic between Fultz and Suggs. Fultz might be good right now in the short term. But if Suggs starts to catch his, catch his win and starts to play better, it may be good to transition to him maybe in a couple of weeks or so. Someone else who's also very, giving you very good production who may probably improve in that few weeks is Vito Oladipo. He's very injury prone though, as we know, so that's the only risk with him, but he's been playing very well recently. Also giving you quite a, quite a few stats, about 15 points a game. You know he's going to get boards, assists, and also get some steals as well. Someone else who's also very consistent. I have mentioned Kelly Olenek sometime back with the Jazz. Uh, I think you probably could replace him with Mason Publey. He's probably has the ugliest free throw shooting form in the league with that left hand shot. Uh, but he's a solid 16 points, 11 boards over the last week or so. And he's, he's been a pretty consistent double double throughout most of the season. So Mason Publey is a good mid range pickup. Dan Schroeder also from the Lakers has been playing very well, averaging about 23 points and probably just over a steal per game. So, um, been playing very well since he has split for 30 over Miami a few weeks ago. So, um, I'm not sure how sustainable it is, but Lakers need all the help there to get. And I, I think he may be a good deal right now. And lastly, from the Atlanta Hawks, DeAndre Hunter, he's been playing pretty well over the last week, about 20.7 boards per game. A small four is one of the thinnest positions in fantasy this year, in my opinion. So if he's available early, he'd probably be a good pickup. Okay. <clears throat> That's the major scout, Alan Pena. He usually gives us good picks. I'm still in the middle of my table and in fantasy, but I try to work my way to the third, third position, but it seems that that'll be a hill pass. <laughs> but of course, you know, everyone tunes into court and session to see the last segment, which is the picks. Well, the last time we had picks, it didn't go very well. But we'll, that is last year. I may leave it at that. But this year, we it have... Go well for who? For anybody? It, it didn't really go very well, full stop. That's not for you. <laughs> so, in pick five, we have the first on Thursday, Thursday, the 12th of January, we have OKC at Philly. OKC at Philly. Yeah, get that uh, one to Philly. Yeah, you're going to Philly. Sam. You going Philly too? Yeah. On Friday, <laughs> Orlando at Utah. <laughs> when hmm. game. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Jazz there. Okay, I'm gonna uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the jazz too. And Kilan gonna be jazz. I really wanna go with jazz. 
Cause I wait anyway. I get up all I know. <laughs> they haven't been terrible on the road, so they may be okay. But yeah, it's one of those games. Games really magic. On Saturday, <laughs> Boston is a is a uh, Charlotte. I put it on myself in Boston. Yeah, we, we can't mess around. We had we had a, we had a very bad week apparently last thing, so we can't mess around. So go go with Boston. I don't think anyone here is picking the Hornets. <laughs> yeah, why not, right? Michael Jordan will have to come back down and play for them in order for me to pick that. He's going to be prime. Yeah, he's going to be a prime, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, our favorite team is playing San Antonio. Sacramento oh. Kings versus San Antonio. No, like the beep. I am going uh, with the Kings. No. <laughs> like the beep. No, I'm going to pick the Kings, right? But here's what I am annoyed. I want you to know the very last time right, that I picked the Spurs. Sorry, I picked against the Spurs. I said, for the first time ever, I said, you know what? They, they are going to lose this game. And they proceeded to win the game. I, like, like, I was so annoyed that like, the one that I went against them. So I'm going to try again. And I'm going to okay. pick the Kings. Please. You, 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 you Please, may have caused Kings. that very bad week, but you're picking against the Spurs. Yeah, look. Kings, look. If the Spurs win this game, you're, I want you're going, you're going I never with pick... Too, um... Alan? Sorry? You're going with the Kings too? Yeah, for oh, sure. Late, late, late to be. Yeah. If, if the Spurs, if the Spurs win, win this game, I am never picking against the Spurs ever again in my life. I will always pick against the Spurs. And it's the crazy. last pick in pick five is Dallas at Portland. Dallas mm. at Portland. Should be a very interesting game. I I game. Hmm. Luca, Luca is Luca is I game with I game with Dan. I game with him. With the Blazers. Okay. Yeah, the Blazers. What about you, Alan? Yeah, you're going to look at Magic. Okay, so you're going with the Magic, man. I really want to go with Luca, but I get him with Portland. I saw I saw um them walking off the court after a loss, and he looked very upset. I feel he's going to do something <laughs> special in the next couple of weeks. Damn dollar versus Luca Magic. So it should be interesting. And that's the yeah. pick five. And right now, our court is adjourned.